Good morning and welcome to Bex Bug Out Survivor. And last night I took out the Gore-Tex hammock tent with its own little micro climate and that was married up with the little bomb pod, hammock bomb pod made from the 90 pat sleeping bag. And if you want to find out uh, what it was like, how it works, then you're going to find out soon as we roll the credits. A little heavier pack than usual it's um, the large Alice pack and tonight's little overnighter is just for me really to test out my shelter I have two kit priorities when it comes to bugging out and one of them is shelter for me gotta be warm gotta be dry and if you'll have seen the little make of that uh, bomb pod you'll be expecting tonight's episode. I've walked out, I'm gonna sit down here for a minute. Bushed. Yeah, so I walked out in my quilted uh, cold weather jerkin and the weather was predicted to have cooled right down from the last few camp outs. Got my Gore-Tex, it's just in case it's gonna go wet and cold. I have my army wool jumper. So I'm going to be warm and I'm going to be dry. It's my Pat 90 and it is in its stuff sack. This is the entire bug out shelter. That's everything I need. But just in case, I have bought with me a little three quarter length inflatable just for extra um, insulation. I've had this out a few times, but uh, just not tested it for an overnight I expect good things from this the last few nights I've taken out uh, not surplus but off the peg kind of ham hammock gear and I've not been impressed this is stuff you buy from companies who are specialized in making hammock insulation and to be quite honest with you if that's the best they can do I'd rather not have it I'd rather make something myself like this. There's a foot end. Here's the head end. And inside the hood end of my bivvy is a beaner. I need to figure out how I'm going to attach this six mil polypropylene line to it. I'm going to use the power of a pulley system by coming round the tree with both lines back to the beaner, run it through then when I pull, I'm using the power of a pulley system and that should give me about two and a half to one. So it should be a lot easier and I can get a lot higher. Let's get that done. So that's both cords around the tree, both cords back to the beaner. I can clip it straight back into the beaner and tie a quick release knot here. Um, I'm going to actually sag this down because I want to raise the other end. But I'll show you. I make a letter D and I pop a loop through the letter D and get everything close down that end there. I only have to tug on these two lines here. It all comes undone really, really easy. Let's show you. There, it's down. It's as quick as that. So that has centered it and got it to the pitch I want to elevate. I lift it up a tree and that's as technical as I'm gonna go with it. And I think I've got these lines far too tight. 
Wow. This hammock is incredibly tight. It's going to be tight on my shoulders. I can feel it pinching in. And that's because I've got too much span somewhere. Since my last visit here, the tree cutter machines have come through. Now this was just a strip of trees, what, maybe 150 metres wide by a few hundred metres long. And you'll recognise that out here they've already extensively done a lot of cutting. And I think all that's going to happen is the tree cutter machine is just going to follow me all the way up over the hills. So we had to relocate to trees a lot closer together. It really is a great bit of kit. First overnighter in it. I've just draped over my scarf veil. It's giving it even more camo. And I've used a pulley system here onto a quick release knot. Just bought a pair of carry mores down from 100 quid to 40 quid. But the little uh, doodah there has snapped from there. Probably why it's only 40 quid. So I've come further back from the first pitch and get in, which gives me a little more cover from the uh, tree logging machine. I'm quite well concealed and this in itself is quite a stealthy little system. And there you go, I've just made some alterations, um, just moving things about just the way I like it because I'm here for the night. I still have the pocket here of uh, the 90 pack DOS bag. Pop my glasses in there, anything in my pocket into there. And if you get a, a pod system online and you buy it for some reason, the hood's underneath here. No good there, you can't wear it. You need it on your head, mate. So, all them people who tried this idea and, and making money out of it serves you right. There's only the Bex bomb pod that is done correctly and I know it's correct because this is my little creation. The Sibivy bag goes over the whole deal and I have the strings for it here and tighten it up. Get right in, zip up, hood up. And I'm expecting great things from this little setup. I, I expect it to be warm. I expect it to be very, very comfortable. Now then, on saying that, I have bought with me uh, my woolly hat. I bought with me my wool jumper in the bottom of my sleeping bag already packed in and ready for tonight on my Arctic tent booties very similar material to the 90 pack DOS bag so feeties into them into the little pod zip the pod up bring this over in fact I can just have it like this around my shoulders and I can also put up a ridge line and raise it all up off my face if it rains I might show you that anyway because it's part of the system so I have bought with me a consumer version of a three-quarter length self-inflating mat if I need to I'm gonna put it in because um, I do suffer CBS no matter what system I have unless of course that under blanket is goose down I do not need um, any kind of further insulation with that. So before we came into camp, I got everything weighed, including the large Alice pack itself, which also contained two litres of water 
inside the pack. Uh, let's have a look at how much it all came to. Gonna use luggage scales. Ten point eight. Not bad. But in here is my LRRP. And there's a housing for this, a little pocket that I can pull tight to house it. Now I'm not sure originally if that would have gone there, but it fits. So it's where I put it. Um, tomorrow morning I won't be using the stuff sack. I roll mine, use the hammock rope suspension to twine it into a cylinder. I only bought this stuff sack out just so you can see it will fit into it. I'm going to make a brew in a minute. And on the front of the Alice I've got a brew set. And I've gone with BCB cup and I'm using the Booster Plus One as a stove. My brew set I've put in here. Middle here I put the cups. This one here on the right. Oh, that contained my electronics for filming. And here's my sundries. I forget what I've put in each of these now. Oh yeah, fire making kit. My primary fire making kit. Um, middle is my ablutions kit, pink, very nice, and this one here should be head torch, actually I'm going to dig this out now. If you're wondering why I've bothered bringing the weight of my pick, it's only 310 grams and it's so much easier than my plastic trowel. I'm expecting good things from tonight's camp. I've been let down a little with kit that I've bought uh, that isn't surplus and usually in uh, kit that I bring out I like to dress in bare minimums just uh, under crackers t-shirt and just see um, how I sleep and then I'll know better next time. With this, I need to dress according to the outside temperatures, what I would generally walk in to camp with. Now I knew that I'd be feeling the chill about now, that's why I bought myself a hat, a nice woolly jumper, I haven't bothered with the norgi underneath, just, just a t-shirt. Got my scarf as well. So that's going to retain a lot of heat and this is how I'll be jumping in that bomb pod here. Okay, I'm just letting the coffee steep and I'll show you around. The ridge line is up. I felt a bit of rain and it's only a bit of paracord that comes from one beaner to the other which holds up this Gore-Tex. The large Alice has been suspended to this tree. I have a beaner here. I don't know if you can make it out here. Now when it comes to finding somewhere to dig a hole, I'm going to share with you a little secret. Sometimes it's just as easy to find this kind of arrangement in a tree. Find yourself a log like that and put it into that little V like that. There you go, sit yourself down on it. Half eight now. The light is closing in. Now where I am is a little crop of beech trees and beech trees are not the best friends of hammockers. Beech trees have a habit 
of throwing its limbs regardless of if they're healthy or not. It's the way they grow, it's the way they go taller, is to get rid of the lower limbs to make um, room for it to grow upwards. So not an ideal scenario really. Well I have gone with putting the inflatable three quarter length inside the little bomb pod. Okay, temperature is 15.2 Celsius. And let's put it in old money. 59.2. But it feels a hell of a lot cooler than that. I have got my quilted jerkin on, my wool jumper, just a t-shirt under that. And that should see me through to, to the morning because I've got um, the 90 pat hanging in a tree and a Gore-Tex bivvy over that run on a ridge line here and there's where my feet go I'll be popping my feet into them uh, little boot liners later or tent booties it's coming up to around nine o'clock I've got a few things to do if I can gather some firewood I will it's not a necessity but like I said earlier in the feature this is being logged and it's the same higher up here I really don't think we're gonna see this plot again it's a shame I've only just found it really and you can see there's remains of older stumps here there might be something of interest I think there's a van there you know oh no way don't want to get disturbed tonight back to base right quick should be nice and invisible here the only thing I could see was this bottle so I'm gonna put that in the pack and just hope they're not going to start work now. Oh, this is going to be a real downer. <sighs> Please don't start work now. Okay, starting to go dark now. It must be somewhere around 10 o'clock. There's enough light for me to gather some firewood for the morning. Whether I have a fire or not is irrelevant. Um, latrine there for the morning should it be required also a little fire half should it be required and this is how I'm leaving my cook set just like that with the water already in and the fuel bottle and lighter ready to go so I can have a brew straight away also that is super quick to pack away should it be required this shelter is looking super cozy and very very inviting so as soon as I've had my hot chocolate I'll be jumping into the old bomb pod there now the actual sleeping bag itself was called uh, the bomb because of the shape of its stuff sack and originally it, it was the 58 pat so a little poetic license there on my behalf time now for a nice hot chocolate I'm gonna turn it in the thermometer is already been set and I'll let you know exactly my thoughts on it now remember I could easy drop two kilos out of the pack by not carrying the water in the pack like I did do and I can easily drop another four and a half kilos just by not having the Alice pack. This has been fully refurbished, by the way. There's a guy in America who did that for me. Anyway, hot chocolate time, but I will see you in the morning. For me, hopefully sweet dreams. And I am looking forward to diving in the Bex bomb pod.
Oh. oh, boy, oh boy. Oh. oh, what time is it? Plenty of daylight. It's morning time. That's what time it is. Oh, so this is how I would have slept last night. I had the microclimate tent here, the Gore-Tex hammock tent, pulled just about up this far. And I'd be breathing into it. And just like I suspected, it kept me lovely and warm. My breath was warming the microclimate as I suspected it would. However, it did a much better job than I suspected it would. A far better job. Uh, I didn't waste my breath. I used it as a machine to heat the hammock tent, uh, so much so it worked. My actual sleeping bag, uh, or the bomb pod, was unzipped to my waist most of the night, all night, and I didn't have any cold at all. This is one of the warmest little systems I've created. There's just one or two points that need to be addressed, but that'll be when I get back home. Uh, but I'll tell you what them points are in a bit. My temperature sensor is either on low battery or broken, one or the other. But it was reading 24 on the inside and I couldn't get an outside temperature. I'll have to go online for that so I can get a differential. Uh, like I said, it was reading 24 degrees. I can imagine it being 24, then some. I should imagine the inside temperature inside this system would be in the 30s, and uh, I'm talking uh, Celsius there. Uh, so you'll have to do your own equation for that. I think it's double it and add 30. Wow, 90 degrees. <laughs> yeah, no wonder I was warm last night. But like I said, I had it all unzipped. I'm just going to remove the hammock tent down a bit. Oh, right down to the bottom. That just leaves me. Sleeping bag section. Like this. <laughs> Oh boy, this is toasty, toasty. One of the better nights I've had in a while. I should be up making a nice cup of coffee about now. It's just a matter of getting motivation together and getting out. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm half tempted to turn the camera off and uh, and get another couple of hours sleep, but I'm not tired. I'm awake now. All right, count myself in. That, that's what I'm going to have to do. In three, two, one, unzip. No, it's no good. We'll sit by that in a minute and we'll have a little chat. But first, brew set's all ready to go. What a phenomenal piece of kit this is. This is a prepper's must. It really is. It was a uh... Pretty warm little system. When I say warm, I mean very warm. Uh, like I said, 
it was easy in the 30s inside and uh, I couldn't fully enclose myself in it. If I was to change anything about it I'd have the longer 90 pat bag. A little tight on the feet and the extra length on the bag would have made all the difference there. I'm going to burst this into life. That's better. Yeah, so the longer sleeping bag would have made all the difference. A uh, big difference, actually. So I'm on the lookout for a much bigger sleeping bag. Maybe something from the M range. Um, I'm going to want something at least six foot four. I'm only five foot eight and my 90 pat is only five foot eight. It's the small and it wasn't long enough. It was pinching at my feet. That's the only complaint um, I could find about it. So I'm going to look for something uh, a lot longer, at least six foot four, maybe more in the sleeping bag length. And I might even have a go at stitching in the zips myself. I've never sewn a zip in. There's got to be a first time. I've got to learn. Um, my sewing skills are improving. Uh, I'm going to have a go. Much longer sleeping bag. Have a go at putting the zips in. As regards to the hammock itself, work perfectly. Why shouldn't it? Uh, but I am going to try the jungle stretcher, which is army issue uh, 94, I think. Um, and it'll just give me peace of mind and endurance. The problem is, it's a flat bed. Uh, hammock so if I roll over there's a good chance I could fall out but again I'm not going to know until I experiment with that when I get home I'm going to put a brew on and just a little thing I discovered if we come up to the actual hood section here I've shown you these that I put on these are the brass cinch toddles a lot stronger than the plastic because this is a bug out system I need it to endure however if I come over to the actual bivy part it also has a cinch toddle which is plastic I forgot to switch that out so there's a job other than that there's not a lot of jobs to do I can tell you one thing if I pull back here the hammock booties I took off in the middle of the night it was too hot for them and in here right inside with me uh, is my wool jumper I also took that off I actually thought it would require a hell of a lot more um, insulation than it really did I'm glad I had the little three-quarter length inflatable. I need that in, in any system. M maybe it's just me. I don't need it in my goose down under blanket at all, but in synthetic um, insulation I do. I can't give this enough praise, this system. I knew the Gore-Tex hammock tent would work using uh, just your body heat and your breath to warm it and it worked a treat I only had it up to my mouth was breathing into it and then it heated all the inside the whole length this is definitely coming in my bug out system definitely there's no doubts about it I can drop this onto the floor if I needed to but I'm quite happy with this Large Alice pack, the Bex bomb pod. Nice fire on the go. Brew won't be long. The two to one pulley system I used, fantastic. 
Again, quick release loops. We're going to test that out in a bit. Uh, it's a great way of lifting heavier kit that's already pre-attached to your hammock, such as this. Any other system wouldn't have been as easy to use. It's bubbling away nicely. May as well finish it off cowboy style. got a nice bubbling boil to it. I wonder if it's going to taste nicer finished off by the fire. Give it a couple more minutes. And I'm going to put the little system into a roll. I'd love to see just if it works. If it doesn't, it goes back in the pack. It smells nice anyway. Not much of that left now other than the embers and then I can bury the ashes using my little pick. <sighs> Kick my feet up a bit. The elastics that I had on foot and head end seemed to impede uh, the comfortability of the system. So I got up got out and just unclipped them from the beaners and it fit my torso a lot better there was less um, tension on my feet and it, it worked a lot better without the elastics the elastics really are only here to keep the uh, sleeping bag from lying on the dirt keeping it off the ground I, I've got far too much elastic and it was actually stretching uh, against the hammock. It, it wasn't nice, but soon remedied, soon remedied. 140 centimetres I've got on the width of my hammock, which was plenty. Um, I don't know if you've ever slept in a pod before, but unlike an under blanket, hugs you, hugs your shoulders, your hips and your feet. It's a different kind of way of being in a hammock that needs a bit of getting used to. I don't mind it, I don't mind it at all. I quite like cocoons as well, I've got the snug pack cocoon and that, that's nice as well. It, it does require extra insulation for me on a personal level but uh, that's easily remedied also. Um, I, I went for a little wander just to the bottom of the woods and back, uh, collect some firewood and came back to camp and had a look around and the whole system had gone, just wasn't there, couldn't find it. I'd walked straight past it. I should know where it is. It, it was a stealthy little number. I walked past my own system. I was quite happy with that by the way. But this is why I'm up a little earlier than I would have usually liked. Um, I made a mental note of being up at dawn. Just in case the tree cutter machines are coming in. I hope if I come here again next week that these trees will still be here. Otherwise, it'll be a sad little ending to this episode if we lose these trees. Okay, let's drop the bomb. Well, that bit was easy enough. Now I want to try and put it in a roll. And for that, I'm going to use the cord or the rope, which was last night's suspension. I've laid one of them over like that. The cords that ran through the centre I bring together 
and get in the length like that and run the quick release slip knot exactly the same knot I used to hang the suspension so now I have a shoulder carry perfect and there you go there's another way of carrying it out okay I'm gonna say goodbye then that's uh, quite a successful camp I, I enjoyed it I slept really well it's the warmest setup I've slept in in a hammock easily by far just what you saw will take you through to winter so I'm gonna say goodbye and I don't know what system I'm gonna bring out next so you are as in the know as I am but to find out you know what you have to do if you're not subscribed subscribe hit the bell to get your notifications and you'll find out as soon as I find out until then take care of yourself happy trails Sad day, sad day.